Welcome to Craft, Design, Edit, Sleep, Repeat with hosts Lisa Conway and Nikki Jensen. Listen as we take a deep dive into the business of fiber craft design. Hey, sorry for the sound quality, but this was recorded live and on the road, so I didn't have all my equipment. It's still fun, though. Hi again. Hi. <laughs> I'm sitting here with Jackie Doyle. She is a resident of Hobart, Tasmania. I've been having an absolutely wonderful time with Jackie over the last two weeks. And I wanted to share with you Jackie's story. So Jackie, tell our listeners about your, how you started knitting and how you be, moved into the world of design. Um, well, I learned to knit when I was a kid, like many of us did. Um, but I always struggled with it because I was taught the sort of English throwing style. And it just never clicked. And then oh, many years later, as, a, as an adult, I actually went, I was really interested in getting, doing weaving and I managed to, through various rather different things, I ended up buying a loom. And at the time I was living in Brisbane and I literally lived just around the corner from the Queensland Spinners, Weavers and Fiber Artists um, headquarters and they had a Wednesday night, Wednesday evening night hours. So I went along there to learn about weaving and when I was there of course they do all sorts of fibre arts and a lot of them take knitting because it's easily transported and I saw these people knitting in this different way which was continental so I decided to give that a go and it all sort of clicked into place I could get a rhythm going which I could just never quite get with throwing um so that's how I sort of got into got back into knitting and getting and then I guess like many of us with the advent of the internet and access to so many more patterns and uh, information on the internet, I just sort of got interested. And then I was sort of looking at thinking, um, you know, what, are we, what would be a way to be able to um, have a, a side income potentially, of course I have absolutely no income yet whatsoever, but that's beside the point. Um, and I didn't want to, like a lot of friends were starting to get into dyeing and selling yarns. I didn't want to have a business that I had to maintain stock because that's just there, you know, taking orders and sending out. And I thought, well, well, designing patterns and putting them PDFs on the internet, you know, once you've done the pattern, you put it out there and hopefully people buy it. And with the websites we have these days, you don't have to do much to maintain the sales. They just sort of... Happen. happen right you have yeah. to you have to market but it's yes. not like you have to i don't have to sit and stock and pack orders and send them to post and all the rest of it right so. and then i just got along with sort of just um as i sort of then oh how do i go about designing and learning about um construction and knitting and and, and thinking about well i want to do um I want to do this and this and so then it's just I took myself down the rabbit hole of learning how to um, construct a design to construct a pattern how to how do how do you know and um, and then and then also just sort of thinking well, well I want to do I've got an idea it looks like this but how do I make that out of knitting and so that's led me down some other paths you know I've gone down um, I decided I wanted to do a design for my brother. He's got a logo that's a stag's head. And I actually saw a, a cable pattern in a book and went, oh, that looks like a stag's head. I could do something like that for my brother, but I wanted to make it a little bit more. And then I thought about it and went, oh, that'd be cool if it was contrasting colors on either side of a scarf. And that then, then, then took me down to the idea of trying to do cables in double knitting, which, um, was another rabbit hole to go down and work out for myself because at that point in time I haven't found anybody who'd done anything like that. I've obviously since found more um, with Aiden Post Quinn, but um, at that point in time I, I had to work it out for myself. Um, and I don't say that I worked as the first to work it out. I'm sure plenty of people to work it out for me, but I didn't find any references to it anywhere that I could 
Right. Pretty. Which they were readily available. Yeah, that I could follow and, and, and watch on YouTube or whatever. Um, and so that's just it. So now it's just me. I For me, designing now is that I'll see either a pattern, like a, a not necessarily a knitting pattern, but just a, a pattern, a design, a... a like in tiles. Tile, or yeah, any because textures you're... and anything like that. Just something that I will... I might have, and sometimes it is someone else's knitting pattern. I think, oh, that would be look interesting, double knitted. How can I change that to become something that is double knitted, that uses the colour and the texture of knitting, but on the two sides and... Mm -hmm. um, or I'll have a specific thing, or I'll get yarn, I'll get some yarn, and I go, well, what does, what do these yarns? I'll get two yarns that I think are fabulous together, and I'll go, and I'll let them, let them tell me what I want my design to look like. Mm -hmm. They will say, I want to be a this, and then I'll go through the process of playing with things to see how that yeah. comes out. Have you designed anything that isn't double knitting? Yeah, my first three designs. I think I've got three on the internet. On Ravelry, I've got at least two. Uh, uh, just lace knitting. Uh, one's a scarf. The uh, ones that the very first thing I did was a um, just a triangular shawl, and the second one was a a, 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 um, a cowl. And I have three. Yes, I have three, and I have a, a just a simple jumper. Okay. Up there as well. Yeah. And um, but you focus more on the double knitting now. Um, yeah, because it's, it's a bit of a niche. There's so much people doing other stuff. Right. It's just, it's a bit of a niche. Um, well, um, because it's just, I feel like it's something you're different um, to give a point of difference from all the other stuff that's already out there. Because we would all agree that if you look at Ravelry and there's absolutely beautiful patterns on there, but there's also a lot of the same thing. Right. In slight variations, which is fine as well, but... The, the hat pattern that I've partially yeah. check edited is tumbling honeycomb well, honey hun, honeycomb right and that almost has the feel of a quilt to me and mm. the way the tumbling blocks quilt yeah yeah that's well, why that's I was why having trouble remembering because yeah yeah so it's a honeycomb because it's the um hexagons right but also with the way that the textures are inside each of the hexagons it also does look like those tumbling bo blocks that, mm -hmm. and that 3D. that's what it very much reminds me of and and it almost feels like maybe that was some of the inspiration for it because of the no it really was more that one was actually a pattern of another designer the the, the stitch design that i went no i want to do this as a double knitted project so i had to take that apart and work out how that was how they'd constructed that stitch pattern and then how I would do that in double knitting. Right. And then how I would do that in um, managing the colours right. to get the textures and the contrasts and to um, when to change colours as you move through sections so that they you didn't have the blips, the, the, the trailing colours right. either side because of Because there is both texture and colour mm. and the fact that it's the double knitted so it's reversible. I mean, there's a lot to that hat and that cowl. And when you really dig into it, there there's a lot, a lot of really cool things happening with it that you just don't see everywhere. Yeah, yeah. And it's simple things and like, it's just, as I said, it's about deciding when to change the colour so that you can do the... Do, so what, what happens is as the row of cables and it switches both from um, normal stocking stitch to um, pearl side stocking stitch um, under the cable, but so that you don't get the that. previous colour on the other side of the cable, you need to switch the colours beforehand. Because the previous stitch is the one that goes under the cable, so it's all, and it was with the and with the increases, it's working out how to do, because there was particularly in the cow, you transition back into a sort of a, a stripe, and you have to think about how you're going to manage the increases so that you can switch colours. Um, right. The original pattern used knit front and backs, but that didn't work because I needed the first stitch 
to be one color and the second stitch to be another. So I had to, to stop and go, no, that's not gonna work. How am I gonna do this to get the colors that I right. want in the right place? Yeah. So that it would flow nicely into the, into the colors that you want. And you, you do look at it from an almost engineering standpoint, I think, sometimes. Yeah. The way you talk about it and the way you talk about your process is very analytical. Yes, very structured and analytical. And, and mm -hmm. I like things to be really well resolved like that. Yes. Um, we've discussed, and I won't say names, because, um, but we've discussed many times how other certain very uh, popular designers are very intuitive designers, which is wonderful and brilliant, I know, and admire that, but they don't come back and resolve some of the parts of their pattern. And I find that really irritating because... You you get to that point in a pattern and it's you're like, but it could have been done better. Better, yeah, it could have been better. It could have been just that step. To, to me, it would just take it that from an A grade pattern to an A plus pattern, right. which would then actually be really deserving of that person's... Um, fame and and and, yeah. and everyone you know right lordy plenty lord putty lord it's on them all and, the time. and and those of us who are declared knit nerds that we like to talk for hours about how the stitches go together and how you move from one to another and how that affects what you see yes which people we do, <laughs> don't we? Yeah. <laughs> Hours ago. What are you talking about? <laughs> um, so, when did you actually start designing? How long ago? Um, oh, that's a good question. Um, um, where are we now? 2023, probably about. Five or six years ago. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, probably. I'd have to go back to Ravel and see what I put See when it, yeah. Yeah. But that's rough enough. That's that's good enough. Um, and what's it going to ask you? Huh. Well, so do you have designers that you would account as major inspiration? Or um, is your inspiration just from stuff around you? It's a bit of both. Obviously, I think, you know, people like Nathan um, are definite inspirations. But no no one particular. Um, more, and, but more from that, from that perspective of the, 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 the conversation around the knitting. Not so much right. showing, oh, I like your thing, I'm going to copy it. Um, right. And I'm... And I'm, and I'm, and I'm and I, to me, it's about seeing something and going, oh, that would look good in. Um, yeah. How could I do that in? Um, so that it, it's taking something and stretching that, that, that next step. Um, so, no, I don't know that there'd be anyone who's particularly a, a um, individual, you know, an influence. I think, yes, I just take it from the world around me. Um, and yeah, and, and I guess there's also that, that, that I don't want to, I know, I know what it goes into designing, so I don't want to, I don't well, I'm want not to just. Saying, I'm not saying that it, you would copy them or anything. I'm, no, I'm no, but I, you do, as I said before, you do see something will come up in the in knitting world and that, that'll be really popular and fashionable, so everybody does their version of that. Right. And there's enough people doing that. Right. You don't need to do that. No. So, when you are and I'll be honest, about the the things I find from other knitters more than anything is them seeing things people do things and going, yeah, not my thing, not my taste. Right. You know, right. Um, and I think that's just as important for us in in our in our influences is understanding what what doesn't float our boat. Right. Um, exactly. You know. Um, exactly. Because that's that's just as yeah, I think that's just as important. You are an artist in many other ways. You your leather work and your weaving and your spinning and other things like that. Where do you find you look for infer, inspiration? Do you is it just your everyday life or do you like do you look at architecture? Do you I think I look at everything. I've always just loved, 
I like I like photography as well. And one of the things when I but for me photography it's either either I'm zeroing right down in onto the fine details and the patterns and the abstract of those patterns mm -hmm. out of the whole, or I'm going for the big wide landscape that captures the massive skies we have here in Australia. Um, or I do, yeah, so for me it's about how shapes and colours go together to make things. Um, I love the Japanese aesthetic things like um, Hiroshagi and the and the woodcut prints. I love um, William Morris and the arts and crafts movement um, into the sort of Art Nouveau. That natural things, but also geometric things, mm -hmm. um, and then how color plays in that. I think that's why I get a sense of the almost architectural influence. Yeah, definitely. Because it's the way you see shape and color and how they mix. Yeah. In what I've seen you do. Yes, definitely. Definitely. It's about how how the two how to use both of those things to create a whole. Right. And that and is that's... that comes through. <clears throat> That definitely comes through in, yeah. in what I've watched you create because you were talking about the double knitted cables and the things you've done with double knitted cables, the first time I saw, what was it? It was the two color cable that... Yeah, yeah, the first scarf that, that I did. That blew my mind because it never had occurred to me that it could be so easily done in double knitting yeah and that's the thing that, that's that's a, it's the thing that frustrates me with knitting and what your comments you see in knitting all the time is oh I could never do that that's too hard you know the number of people say is oh and when I'm get better when I get more expert I'll try cables and I'm just like all you're doing is rearranging stitches yeah I mean yeah there's the difficulty of making sure you rearrange them around the right way but that's just reading your pattern and believe me we all get that we all <laughs> we've we all, all read get them it should be a front cross and you do a back cross. That's just... That's, yeah, we that's just knitting. all do that, yes. Um, <clears throat> there is nothing in knitting that is hard to do. There are some there are some stitches because you're doing, you know, a five into one knit together or something that can be tricky sometimes because you're just trying to do a lot in a They're small space. They're fiddly. Yeah. But as Nathan says, and as a lot of other people say, I think Sandy Peters is another one that says something similar, um, a, this is fun, one stitch at a time, this is supposed to be relaxing, I see so many people tense and nervous about knitting, and I'm like, what's the worst that's going to happen? Yeah. You've, you've sat and enjoyed yourself knitting for a while, and you don't like the thing, you rip it out and you use the yarn for something else, and you get twice the pleasure of that yarn. Right. It's, people need to relax more and just one stitch at a time, follow the pattern, Hopefully it's a well written pattern and you and it will be easy to and, follow. And even if you make a mistake, it's not the end of the world because no. I'm doing it's, that again. Yeah. It it's real easy to redo. Yeah. You know. No, it's not like painting where once you put the paint on the page, that paint's gone. You've used that yeah. material up, that expensive material up, you know. Um I'd love to paint, but I have I do have a genuine fear of using the material. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I have that with other things. I you know? I think that your leather work is another one where I would have a problem. I of... I sit in here. We bought that beautiful leather last week, and I'm like, <laughs> I don't want to cut this. Cause I'm gonna. It's gonna sit there. It's gonna sit there for a good few months before I decide what to do with any of that, because I don't want to waste it. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Whereas yarn is real easy to reuse. Yeah. Yeah. I like it, rip it out. Yeah, even even my spinning, um, if I'm not real happy with the way a spin is going, I'm not getting the right diameter or whatever, and there are ways to fix that. And you know what? If you've used natural fibers and you really don't like it and there's nothing you can do to save it, you can compost it. Yes. <laughs> yes. And people will have a heart attack about me saying that, but you know what? But It's, it's all, still useful. And it's all renewable. Yeah, it's still useful. You know, fiber is one of those things that there's going to always be more of. Yeah. Right? Yeah. 
So, um, what advice would you give to someone that is thinking about designing? Um, there's lots of books out there about how to design, about stitches, about shawl shapes. Um, there's lots of resources. Do a bit of reading, have a look around things and decide what it is that you like and what speaks to you. Because there's no point trying to design something um, because you think it's fashionable or it's what's going to sell. Design what you like. If it's lacy shawls, go for it. Um, keep it simple because I'm stupid. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, you're not. <laughs> follow the KISS principle. Um, remember that, yeah, and just do what you like. Pick yarns you like to work with and design things that you'd want to knit. Because yeah. first of all, you've got to knit the damn thing to get it to a sample stage and to work out the pattern. And that's the bit that takes me the longest because you know, even though I continental it, I can still really slow. Um, and if you're gonna do an all over lacy pattern on a triangular shawl, that takes forever. I've had some great ideas for a series of shawls and I never got them finished because just getting the thing knitted was driving me batshit bored. <laughs> so design what you'd wanna knit, I probably is the key. But then also just sit down and then find some things that are similar and have a look at how they're constructed and knit them and so you learn how they're constructed. To me, knitting things, I struggle to finish things because once I've worked it out, I'm like, oh yeah, okay, I've worked that out now and the problem solved. And so then the sitting and knitting is like, oh, I'm gonna, yeah. So. Okay, it's supposed to be fun, remember? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> And so, but to me, the fun part is solving the problem. How does this work and how does this go together? Yeah, what you need is a sample knitter. Yes. You figure it out, you write it down, and you have someone else knit it for you. Yeah. Or as I've decided recently, I'm only going to knit, I'm only going to design hats and cows because they're reasonably short and I can get them done. <laughs> Unlike the real there long not, scarf. That... There will be no schlankets. <laughs> they're coming out of my world. <laughs> Because life's too short to knit that sort of shit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to think. Um, where can people find you? Um, at the moment, um, I'm taking that on my website because it was costing me money I didn't have. Um, so I do need to get that back up. But you can find me on Ravelry, as Snowflake Fibre Arts. You can find me on Instagram and Facebook as both of those. I don't post super often. Um, because you've got to have something worth posting about. Um, but yeah, those are the places to find me. Okay. If someone was interested in um, test knitting for you, for example, would you prefer a DM through Instagram or Ravelry or? Um, I'd say actually probably Ravelry because um, Instagram, you just don't know whether people are right. real or not. Um, yeah, um, yeah, if you were, I've got a few people that are, that are testing for me, so that's great. Um, but yeah, if anyone wants to get in touch, yeah, probably easiest is best is through Ravelry because it's I'm less likely to consider that it's spam. Yeah, okay, <laughs> that, that's a great idea. And um, did you get the pattern so that I can take it with me and get it finished? Uh, yeah, it's like the thing I've got to finish up with. Of getting that one out is because the cables there's very little out there on how to do the cables I'm trying to put the instructions together so that people can buy this pattern that's got this right new to them technique in it and believe me I understand <laughs> yeah and um, so I've got the pattern ready to go and I might just release that anyway and then get the instructions out and I've got the instructions sort of about 75 80 percent of the way there okay so it's just I've got to pull my finger out and yeah. do that um, um, I struggle at the minute because I'm very busy at work so by the time I get home my mental space is yeah and your, your your daytime job does take a lot of mental space yes 
Yes. So, yeah. Yeah. So, um, so we'll get there. Okay. We'll get there. I know there's another question I'm supposed to ask you, but I can't think of what it is. Because this has gone really fast. And it shouldn't have. <laughs> Believe me, we could sit and talk knitting all day. And then when we want to record, it all goes out yep. the window. Yeah, of course it does. But that's okay. Yeah. Um, it doesn't have to be a long episode. It just has to be a good mm -hmm. one. And I think this is a good one. Um, what do you want to design next? You've been working on the the tumbling honeycombs, yep. and you've got both the cowl and the hat. Yep, with the cowl and the hat. And those should be coming out before too long. Yep. Um, are you going to write up the uh, rainbow cable, or is that just for you? No, no, I want to get that one um, written up. Um, that one's a little bit harder because that one throws in some um, double knitted intarsia into the mix as well. Yes. Um, you know, if you're going to do these things, do them properly. Um, but I wanted to try and get that one out this year because it is um, nominally titled Dark Side of the Moon. It's inspired by the cover of Dark Side of the Moon. And, of course, this is the 50th year of Dark Side of the Moon. So um, I need so to... So I can expect that one in my inbox soon? Probably, probably possibly, there's... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um... Yeah, so yes, yeah, so I mean, as it's, you know, just about October, and that means I've got three months of this year left. Right. <laughs> but as recently, had it was going to be a scarf, and recently it decided, it told me it was becoming a cow, or I told it it was becoming a cow, because um, it, otherwise it was probably going to be another 10 years before I finished knitting it at scarf length. <laughs> it is double knitted in Tarja. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> changing, changing through, well... Uh, if you count both sides of background, changing through eight pairs of colors. Right. <laughs> yeah, it, it's gorgeous. I, I have to say that that one is also really a fascinating possibility. Mm. Anything else that you've got that's tumbling around in that brain of yours? Um, a few things. I've got some new yarn recently from our good friends Julie and Paul at um, Honey Hoolies. Um, so I'm working, that's sort of sitting there marinating about what it wants to be. Um, so I'm just working my way through some various ideas, um, getting over this cold that... That I away. gave her. Yeah. <laughs> well, we still haven't decided whether it was me that brought it in or your brother, so... It's both of you. <laughs> I think it was both, but You're at both the same involved. Time. I don't care. <laughs> you can take it back. Um, I've told you right along, I feel really bad. <laughs> um, so yeah, no, just, it, yeah, I'm... Ideas marinating that yeah. haven't really come to the surface yet. No, no, I've just I've done a little bit of playing with a couple of things. Um, and then it's a case of sitting down and seeing how they actually work in, in, in reality. Yeah. And how they match up to what I've put in the computer. Okay. Well, um, favorite software? Um, so I use a combination of Stitch Mastery. I often use Stitch Mastery just for basic um, knitting, putting things in place, seeing how things fit together, checking counts of stitches and things like that. But then to do my actual charts, I use um, um, Affinity Designer. Um, because I've need to, I've had to come up with the stitch, the new symbols to make the, the cables work to, to show the colours and right. how the colours interact. Um, stitch Mastery can't cope with a cable, it's got two colours in it. So, no, it can't. So I've had to spend a fair bit of time just getting symbols worked out. Yeah. Um, yeah, and then I use other parts, and then I use Affinity Publisher for my actual page layout. Um, um, so yeah, they're probably my, they're the, they're the ones that... I have to say that I, I'm really happy with that purchase. I've been, I've bounced for a good eight months or more on the idea of getting it, and I got it shortly before the trip, and I just absolutely loved it. Yeah, yeah, I, I wanted to get away from Adobe if quite a few, a few years ago now, because just the cost, I was having yeah. to pay, I only wanted 
you know, Photoshop, um, whatever their um, drawing guide program is, I can't remember now. Um, but I only wanted two or three of their programs. I didn't want to buy all 20 things. And to do that, it would cost you just as much as the full subscription. Yeah. Because the individuals are just, and it was just, just, just nowhere, and it was just that whole subscription model of paying for something that if you don't use it for months because you're busy and you can't get to it, you just pay, you know, it's the same, yeah. it's the same with Microsoft. You I know, know I, I divested myself of Microsoft as well. Um, and I'm just using, I use, I work on a Mac, um, uh, and I just started using Pages and Numbers and Google Docs because I'm just sick of paying. You can't just buy a license anymore that you just, you know, you've got to pay this subscription. Yeah. And that I'm whole just, subscription model bugs me. Yeah, I just feel like it's just this whole way of them just getting money constantly for not actually doing anything. Yeah. And your favorite stitch dictionary. Oh, God. I don't know that I've got a, a single favorite. Um, I've got a few various ones that I have, but I tend to... It depends on what it's like, what I need. Okay. Um, I'll you often use a combination to get informed what I want, and then I'll adjust it from there to what I actually, I'll you know like I'll I'll use a dictionary to get me to give me an idea of how I'm going to step a cable to get the angle I want, but from there then I'll play with it and yeah. so it's so I wouldn't say I have a, a favourite. Um, they're just all a stack of books to look through and yeah. one day I'll use something and from there. Yeah. And and like you said, you end up pulling from this one and then adding something from that one and Yeah, definitely. They're, because you don't just base design based around a stitch. You no. you design based on the shape and color that you want to get. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes it can be nice to figure out if somebody's got a favorite. <laughs> I'm still trying to build my stitch, stitch dictionary library because that's not something I've traditionally yeah. used much of. And now I'm finding that's what I really want more than anything. Yeah, I find frustrating. I find knitting books frustrating. Any how-to books are at the... Um, the vast majority of how-to books are at an introductory level, which is fine because that's where most people want it. Um, I often want more detailed information, um, so there's not a lot of books that go to that next step. Right. Um, or there's stitch dictionaries, but I'm finding that a lot of those now are becoming quite repetitive. Um, once you've got X number of stitch dictionaries, you've probably covered most things and. I don't right. need 10 Japanese dictionaries. I think I've got two that covers. Yeah, I think I've got two, and that's probably the only ones yeah, I really need. It pretty well covers most of what, because yeah. those you're going to cover most things that you want. Yeah. Um, and then pattern books, again, frustrating. I think at times, and I've, I've come across this in terms of thinking about planning to write a book around double knitted cables, um, I think sometimes books come up with a pattern just so they can fill the space in the book because they feel like they need X number of patterns. Um, and or they're trying to write a range, have a range of patterns to cover a, a wide group of people to appeal to as many people as possible. Right. So. Well, I, books are getting harder to sell. Yeah. And in our digital age, where you can buy a single pattern, to buy a book of patterns when you're only going to use one of them. Yeah, and that's a lot very of people are really getting to the point where. So, as, for for books, you know, to have on a shelf, I want the ones that are going to teach me new techniques, like Nathan's yes. double knitting, new double knitting book, demystifying double knitting. That one I really wanted because I knew there were techniques yes, in it. Yes, yes. Even I look at that and use that as a reference to help me explain how I'm doing things. Or and and because it's, as I might it's have still said an to expanding I technique have, for me. As I said to him, I may or may not have 
looked at his pictures and done very, very similar photographs for my own instructions on certain <laughs> techniques. I, I may or may not have looked at his videos and tried to duplicate them very badly. <laughs> don't, don't talk about me like that. <laughs> Because the other thing is too, for me, it's like if I'm putting something out there, I that particularly if it's a new and a newish technique or something that's a bit different to what's already available, there's two sides. So one, I should give you the information, but two, I'm selfish. I want to keep you in my world and give you the information. So if you're going to have to click through to a a, a video link, you're going to click to through my video link that's branded with me on it because then you also might find something else to do. You might find that. Yeah. So whilst it's also me helping you, it's also trying to keep you in my world so you don't go off and buy someone else's pattern. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I'm not that selfish. Because Marketing 101. <laughs> I, I just happen to know that my video isn't as good as his. So no, he's in my, in my video, I have a link to his just so that you can get a second opinion. <laughs> yeah. Oh, absolutely. And I'll, and I'll absolutely say in my, in, my, in my book, you know, reference, you know, that the, the, these, are the, these are my references. These are my... Yeah. Because we all should, you know, none of us, I had to work We're that many so cables world. out to myself. But I as I said many, many times, I am not the first person to have done this. No. Um, I've since found out a couple of others, you know, even Nathan had done a small amount of cables before. But he'd only done one stitch cables, you know, one by one cables. Um, but that helped. That still helped me work out what I needed to do for two and three cables. And he's now actually duplicated your cable not in a pattern that he is releasing but because he wanted to see how it worked yeah <laughs> so, so he did his own version of it yeah but that no that was a slightly different pattern that he did the, the blue and well yeah because he did he he used your idea for the two color cable and, and then he and narrowed he the yarns on the side, which, which yeah, he did not do. Yeah, yeah, and he did the cables a little bit differently in, yeah. in the actual cable. And then also he, also he liked my offset. But it was your idea to yeah. begin with, and he admitted yeah. he stole it from you. <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> I might have had a little bit of a moment when I saw that on the video. <laughs> yeah, agreed. Yeah, it always feels good, doesn't it? Yeah. It's like, oh, yeah. that's me! <laughs> Yeah, um, yeah, I really hope that, um, what I hope people take away from this podcast, and not just this episode, but all of my episodes, is look at the world around you, figure out what speaks to you, translate that into your knitting, and then share it. And don't, because we could all see something different. Absolutely, and don't, I do, and don't limit yourself. I see so many people in this world go, I could never do that. Um, and maybe you can't, but you don't know if you don't try. Yeah, and and, it, and things are much easier. And if you try something and the way it was explained to you doesn't work, find another. In this day and age. If you go on YouTube and find a video that doesn't make sense, find another one. Someone else has another another video that will explain yeah. it different. If you search for a knitting technique, you're going to get 20 different versions. And there'll be one there that'll help you. Yeah. And because one of them is going to put it in the language that your brain accepts. Exactly. Because everyone's brain works differently. Um, you know, everyone... I'll express with you the other day with the Genesis and the way Nathan had his chart. You know, it was such a and as I said point. to you, it was going to be that there's just a lost in translation between what he means and what your my, what my brain, brain was, was taking in, and yeah. it was, and it was just like why? And I kept saying to him, I know I'm doing something wrong. What am I doing something? What am I doing wrong? And it was because I'm so used to doing the double knitting in the round, my brain just wouldn't reverse it for the flat. Yeah, yeah, and so you've just. And so it's like, yeah. yeah. And you now know. that I've got it, I've got it. Yeah. And I still have to really think that, that row coming back because I have to tell myself, okay, dark means light first, dark second, yeah. you know, versus dark first, light second. Yeah. I have to walk myself. And that's why I kept having to back up at 
the net group. There was so much chat that my brain was. Yeah, yeah. There's knitting you can do in social WhatsApp settings, and there's knitting you can't. Yep. <laughs> and I really needed a sock project. <laughs> yeah. But that's okay. You know, yeah. I've I've met some really wonderful knitting friends of yours over this last two weeks, and I yeah. want to thank you for every minute of it. That's all right. My pleasure. All right. Well, thank you for taking the time for this as well, no. especially knowing you don't feel well. I feel better than I did. <laughs> and it, hopefully it will continue. Yes. Well, thank you for joining us. I will be back next month with something new and exciting. Don't know what it is yet, but I'll be here. Don't forget to like and subscribe wherever you listen. And join the conversation in our Ravelry or Facebook groups. For technical editing, find Lisa at ArcticEdits.com and Nikki at HandKnitsAndYuga.com.